Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Susan Kennedy. Montgomery County is full of amazing people who are working to make this county one of the best in the nation. In this show, we will introduce you to two of those people who are making a difference. Over the past several years, this county has had its share of emergency situations and weather-related events that have received national attention. One man who has been instrumental in preparing Montgomery County residents for these events is Chris Voss. It's his job to make sure residents are informed during an emergency. The bottom line, making a difference between tragedy and survival. Earthquakes. Fires. Floods. Hurricanes. Natural disasters come in all shapes and sizes. If one hits here in Montgomery County, will you be ready? Do you know what's available to you as a county resident in response to these events to make sure you are safe? Chris Voss heads the county's Office of Emergency Management. He has seen the county through numerous events, most of them weather related. Montgomery County actually puts out a, a Montgomery County handbook um, and it has information to do, you know, how to deal with sort of all of these events. Now, it's not lost upon me that people have probably not memorized our 25 page handbook on what to do with everything from white powder and earthquake. Um, it's also why it's important for, you know, not just Montgomery County government, for all our businesses, also, I think, train and exercise their staff. This is about running drills. I mean, that will sort of hammer home the message more so to, I think, the average person, uh, more so than handing them sometimes a booklet. But that booklet does have information. Obviously, we want people to read it. But uh, together with training and exercises, we think that the message is even better. In June of 2012, Montgomery County experienced one of the worst summer storms in decades. The derecho left thousands without power for days on end. Voss told us during the period following the storm, the county had all boots on the ground in an effort to make sure residents were safe and aware of what was available to them. Everything that we do gets a little bit busier. Uh, there seems to be a sense of urgency with a lot of those activities, uh, but we are. We're there to sort of help that community. We want to make sure that things like shelters, cooling centers, you know, traffic signals are monitored. These are all part of our safety net. Another part of that safety net, Plan 9, a guide to the nine essential items you should have on hand in case of an emergency. The county also offers its Alert Montgomery service, a system where the county sends you information when an incident or emergency takes place. This free service currently has close to 250,000 subscribers. You know, when we had to change bus schedules, if you wanted to find out about debris removal in the county. You know, all this information we were pushing out via that Alert Montgomery system. So, you know, even if your computer wasn't on, hopefully your devices had some charge. And if you had, uh, if you were receiving, a, if you have a, you know, BlackBerry device or a smartphone device, you were getting some of those emails and you were getting some of those messages. The Office of Emergency Operations also works with the schools to deliver important information. There are exceptions, however, where Voss himself will intervene to get critical messages out to the masses but he is careful not to oversaturate folks with information. You know, we try and look at each of these events and do what we think is sort of make sure the appropriate information gets out there without actually sending so many messages that we desensitize people. But it's a major concern for us. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I love the systems we have. Um, I want to provide people information. I try not to provide it to them three, four, five times because I know then that we're going we're gonna to lose some of our audience. But probably the best advice Foss has is for folks to get to know their neighbors. I know now, I mean, probably a lot of my neighbors. So you could find out if they have power. You could find out maybe if you're not home, if it got restored, or maybe if they need something. I wasn't here when it happened, and I think that was a lucky thing. Um, so my neighbors called me right after it happened. It's a great idea to sort of, you know, tap on your shoulder, you know, your neighbor's shoulder, maybe when you're out there talking. Uh, maybe better if you, you shared a beer with them every now and then. But, uh, you know, if nothing else, share some of that contact information and go back and forth when, you know, when there's an event like this. So, are you ready? Take these steps to ensure your family, neighbors, and community are prepared for the next disaster. First, sign up for Alert Montgomery. Second, make a plan. 
Make sure your family knows a location to meet outside the home and outside the neighborhood and then test that plan. Three, make a kit with a 72-hour supply of those nine essential items and medication. Four, keep your gas tank one quarter full. Five, keep your mobile devices charged. And six, keep important numbers handy. Finally, get involved by helping your neighbors and friends prepare. Tea is the second most popular drink after water. People drink it hot or cold, with milk and sugar, or just plain. But when Seth Goldman decided to bottle up his brand of tea, the results were an honest success. It started with the search for the perfect drink to quench his thirst. Seth Goldman found most drinks were too sweet or tasteless and didn't fulfill his needs. You, you, it's good to be on the leading edge of, of things. I think too often in the beginning we're on the bleeding edge. <laughs> it's like, we're Jump ahead to 1997 and Goldman quit his job at a mutual funds company. What we used to do was put tea leaves in this basket here. And was brewing batches of tea in his kitchen with his professor from the Yale School of Management, Barry Nailbluff. It was a, uh, not the best process, but it worked. Oh my goodness. This is a little bit of a timeline for the company's history, starting back in 1998 when there were three employees and or I started, you know, was still selling tea out of my house. We got Whole Foods as our first customer, which we sold using thermoses and a, a, an empty Snapple bottle. And did you deliver that tea yourself to Whole Foods? I presented it myself and then we had a truck deliver it, that I, I wasn't driving. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't long after that first year that Honest Tea took off in sales. In the early 2000s, the company grew by about 50 to 60 percent a year. Their mission, to create a product in which the true taste of the tea leaves comes through. So here's, you know, spearmint leaves, which is, I just made some this morning, and, you know, that's, those are the ingredients. Oh, that smells yeah. really right? good. When you're growing this big, mm -hmm. this quickly, mm -hmm. what can you, what do you attribute that to? What was it? <laughs> a lot of hard work, really. I mean, I think they, there's certainly um, some truth. We were, we were offering something different, you know, so we would go to the stores. Everyone, most of the stores had products that were really sweet, you know, sort of 100 calories per serving, and we were offering them something 30 calories per serving, so it was very different. And, and what happened is over time, people's diets started to change. In 2007, his young son gave him the idea to create a less sugary drink to pack in his lunch, which resulted in Honest Kids. I was packing his lunchbox and I was putting in a lot of those sweet drinks in his lunchbox. He said, Dad, he says, you know, you're, you're selling all these healthy drinks to adults, but you're putting a <laughs> really sweet drink in my lunchbox. And he was right. And good, so, good point. Yeah, and this is, this is now a third of our business. In 2008, the company celebrated its 10th anniversary with the announcement that Coca-Cola would be purchasing 40% of the business. Goldman says this opportunity has allowed Honesty to take its mission to a much greater level. When Coke invested in 2008, we were in 15,000 stores around the country, and this summer we got over 100,000. The goal was, was to, to make this product, you know, a healthy, sustainable product, more available. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and it's not too sweet, really right? Really good. That's, I like that. Yeah. I like the very and in terms of production, we're now, we've gotten four Coca-Cola bottling plants that are certified organic. Um, so now they're producing our product. And in fact, producing it at a, um, the product is better from a quality perspective. And it's still made with real tea leaves. You know, there's no, there's no um, shortcuts that we've taken. We wanted to learn more about where the tea for our raspberry tea comes from, the people picking the tea leaves, and the fair trade partnerships that we have with the community. So earlier this year, I traveled to Tamil Nadu in India to visit the Korakunda Tea Garden. But not only does Seth Goldman talk the talk of an environmentally conscious entrepreneur, he walks the walk as well. The tea workers pick the top two leaves in the bud off the plants. Here's the two leaves, one, two in the bud. He rides his bike to work every day. It's such a great way to start the morning. And even gave each one of his employees a bike so that they could also live a more healthy, sustainable lifestyle. You know, I'm a co-founder and Honest Tea is a co-founder yes. of Bethesda Green. Right. Goldman is also responsible for helping launch the Bethesda Green Project. Honest Tea donated 30 recycling bins to the city of Bethesda to help the county increase its recycling rates. I reached out to Councilmember George Leventhal, so we um, donated through Coca-Cola about $30,000 and acquired about 30 bins throughout downtown Bethesda. 
and much of his office space was constructed with recycled material. For the whole office, we've tried to create a sustainable feel. We, we put in these bamboo floors, which are, bamboo is a rapidly renewable hardwood, so you can, you know, the plants regenerate very quickly. And so we put that in throughout the office. This used to be a mortgage broker's office. It used to have walls and cubicles, and uh, we took down all the walls. We let people feel closer to, to nature. And in yeah. fact, the windows open, which is oh, nice. That's <laughs> in, really nice. in, in, in um, office buildings, it's almost like passing an act of Congress to be able to open the windows. <laughs> Honesty employees also participated in a National Community Service Day, which here in Montgomery County included cleaning up the Cabin John Trail and painting a community health clinic. Most of our employees aren't here in Bethesda, most of them are around the country. Um, so they were doing work all over the country. Honesty is known as a countrywide leader in sustainability. The company is the first manufacturer to introduce certified fair trade bottled tea. New flavors are actually created in a mini lab in the Bethesda office and the employees are the official taste testers. It's a simple, down-to-earth working atmosphere that's generating millions of dollars in revenue annually. And when you ask Seth Goldman why he chose Bethesda for this venture, his answer is clear. And in fact, I had some, some advanced uh, investors come into town who said, oh, well, you know, if you're going to be this natural foods company, you should be setting up a P.O. box in Vermont or New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, you don't want to have it based in Bethesda. And, and my first question was, well, number one, that's not honest. You know, <laughs> to be honest. but number two is, well, what's wrong with Bethesda? Why can't it? Why shouldn't it really be um, one of the leading green communities in the country? Um, why can't we make Bethesda that way? Transparency is a commitment Goldman has been able to keep since he first launched Honest Tea some 14 years ago. At the Bethesda headquarters, there are no fancy offices or conference rooms. In fact, Goldman works alongside the other employees. He puts on no airs. It feels like a natural uh, representation of, of who we are, you know, in terms of what we're building, who we, who we, how we want to communicate with people. Our, our company, people feel comfortable coming to work because it's, you can be your whole person here. You don't have to sort of check your values at the door. You don't have to sort of leave behind a part of your mm -hmm. life, whether it's, you know, personal relationships or things you believe in. Um, we really want to encourage people to be able to express mm -hmm. all parts of themselves through their work. What's next for Seth Goldman and the folks at Honest Tea? He says he likes to say their tea party is just beginning. It's this um, proverb, which is one of my favorite bottle cap quotes, those who say it cannot be done should not interrupt the people doing it. And that is so core to what, how we think about our business because we're doing something. From the start, we've been doing something that's challenging. It's very easy to take easier paths. So, you know, for us, we knew we'd sweeten up the drink and it'd sell more. Or, you know, if you don't put organic ingredients in, we can make it cheaper and it'd sell more. Um, but we said we really want to stand for something here. And in the long term, that made sense. In the short term, it was probably made it a little more painful for us. Um, so, you know, you have to sort of really make sure you know why you're doing something and then stick with it. And I think the other one, which certainly served us well, is, is just don't give up. <laughs> well, that does it for this edition of The Bottom Line. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Kennedy for County Cable Montgomery. Thank <laughs> you.